So uh, nobody, I think, uh, who knows anything about the system underestimates the, the, the job that universities now have. What do you say the flashpoints are? I think that the key thing is um, if you have your first choice and you're a student, then then stick with that. You know, many are progressing, not just in September, October, but, but you know, getting onto campus uh, now in their bubbles. Um, I think for those that haven't got their first choice and then they get their centre assessed grades, um, and if those centre assessed grades meet the conditions of that first choice, then speak to that first choice. And, and for people who might not know what that is, that's teachers' grades, basically. Teachers' yeah, assessments, effectively, yeah. yeah. Yeah, effectively, that's what the, the teacher and the school, the centre, uh, said uh, that, that they thought you would get um, prior to the sort of moderation. Um, I think the key thing is, um, you know, to continue that conversation. So I think you said Holly had had sort of guaranteed place, but, uh, but perhaps not this year. Continue that conversation, because I know from speaking to uh, 450 admissions professionals just yesterday um, that actually those those admissions professionals are having to real time review decisions and and you know go through that during the course of this week. So yeah, everything is still in flux, is what you seem to be saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So don't take don't take something that's said to you today as absolute because things are still changing. Yeah, I mean, uh, universities are having to weigh up a whole set of constraints. Um, you know, partly brought on by COVID in terms of social distancing, both in academic and social environments, um, but also things like placements and lab environments and all of that they need to take consideration of to ensure, you know, a student's safety and the ability to learn an effective environment um, before they then can say, you know, we'll, we'll absolutely, you know, guarantee this year. And so that's the sort of things that they will be going, the decisions they'll be going through over the hours and days to come. It will come to the COVID measures in a moment, but I suppose the the obvious thing is space, physical space to educate them in a, you know, to, to give lectures, to have seminars, to have, um, you know, the, the, the right number of teachers to give even small group teaching, that kind of thing. That's got to be a big challenge if, if you've got hundreds more who, who have the right, in inverted commas, to come. Yeah, physical space will be one of those things. As I say, placement, uh, particularly if you think about, you know, medicine or, or nursing uh, degrees, um, labs particularly, where you've perhaps got physical space that has certain kit it needs in it, are all things that universities will be working through. Uh, it'll depend on the physical location of the university. You've got, you know, obviously you've got very different universities, some very city-based, some uh, rural campus-based. So it will mm. depend on their physical estate as well. Um, and they'll be working through that. And, 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 and you know, most universities will just be very honest and transparent with you about the fact they're working it through um, as they receive the centre assess grades and have conversation with you. And have all caps on student numbers been lifted? I mean, clearly there's, there are natural caps that have to happen at some point, but it, th th there was a cap on numbers. Has that now been removed? Yeah, as we believe it, the student number controls effectively, which are the caps, as you referred to, have been removed. So um, that is one thing that universities don't necessarily need to worry about. But I think, you know, some of the practical considerations are as much a worry as potentially any number caps were, were for universities mm. um, and sometimes more complex to work through. And I'm, uh, I'm just wondering as well um, if... If, as in the case of my niece, if if they say maybe not this year, and again, it's not definitive yet, but maybe not this year, given that COVID has already produced a degree of digital learning inevitably in some universities, um, I wonder whether that might for some, not across the piece, this is this is a real bespoke situation, isn't it, in many cases, that you have to shape it for the, for the child and the, well, the teenager and, and the university in question, but I wonder whether the digital offer because of COVID could be part of the solution here. Um, I, 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 absolutely. I mean, all universities, and this is why I've got every confidence they'll be flexible moving forward, have shown quite, you know, flexibility in the last four or five months in moving to a quality digital offer. And mm. quality is the key. It's got to be a quality digital offer. Yeah. But I've been hugely impressed with that. And I think it's definitely part of the, the secret to success in, in future years, not just 2021, which will be different as we know it than what we perhaps thought. But I, I mean, I certainly think COVID will have a, an impact on the HE experience and HE admissions for, for the medium to long term. And we have to consider the staff as well here, don't we? Um, it, it's all very well saying, right, we can take 50 extras on this course um, as long as they don't mind 50% of their lectures being um, uh, on Zoom. Um, but that's still time, isn't it? It's still teaching time. Yeah, I mean, just just because it's an online experience, and I think Universities UK and then universities have been very clear about this, 
the, the, the quality digital experience requires investment. It requires investment in terms of infrastructure, but also how you teach so that you're not just getting you know, a series, a slide deck of PowerPoints, that you have an interactive experience yeah. through that digital uh, learning experience. So, so absolutely, it still requires investment, both in infrastructure, but also uh, lecturers and teaching staff and, and bringing a different set of skills. Well, we used to get very heavily, I went to Durham University where you get very heavily snowed in in the winter. You could literally be stuck in your college for a week because you, so you couldn't get to lectures because of that. And I remember at a key time having, a, it was a bit, I suppose, a bit ahead of its time really. The key time I had a, a phone tutorial with, with somebody from the Spanish department because there was a, spe- a specific piece of work I needed help with. And, and in a way, it's that brought to the 21st century, isn't it? That if that can be done in, in a way that doesn't put, exert too much pressure on the staff and is still a genuine offer to the student, then there are solutions in that digital sphere. There are, absolutely. And I think organisations, you know, I'm I'm proud of the organisation I work for. We went 24 hours. We went completely remote back at the end of March. Um, Organisations will be at different levels of maturity in terms of their ability to work remotely. And universities will be at different levels of maturity as well, Mm. as per every other sector. So it's about... Every, you know, almost COVID has had to accelerate many organisations' development of their digital, remote, you know, virtual strategy, um, where they perhaps were, were previously mature. But, but you know, we have all our contact centre staff working from their homes, all our social media staff. So, so just going back to those students who are, you know, tossing and turning around with some of these questions, we are there to support them. Um, and we've got extended opening hours um, and we've ramped up the number of people. So, so just would re-emphasise there are people to support you. Don't feel too anxious. If you could give parents and students who might be listening to you, the head of UCAS, Chief Executive of UCAS, if you could give them two top points to consider today in all the conversations they're about to have or continue to have, what would they be? First one would be, if you've got your first choice, good luck, have a brilliant experience. You know, it's fantastic for me going to university, as with hundreds of thousands of people each year. So that's the first thing, and 70% of people are going to be in that space. For those who haven't got their first choice, if you get those centre assessed grades and you think you meet the conditions, phone that first choice, have a conversation and then reach out to us and we'll help you navigate.